you start thinking about like crazy things like whenever you're cold you know I'm, I'm sitting there thinking about things that i can light on fire in my living room it, it was the first time I, I saw how fast established order could absolutely disintegrate it brings me tears to even think about it now because i lost so much that i can't replace Hello. 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 Yeah, it's a good time. I'm on lunch now. I appreciate you even offering to talk to me about it. It was just a, a bad situation that I'll, I'll never forget, to be honest. This is a severe weather alert. We could be talking about record cold we haven't seen in decades. It is a perfect storm to bring the coldest of the air right down into Texas. Are pipes going to burst? Are we going to see power outages, rolling blackouts because of demand? This is a real threat. When I first heard about Texas getting snow, I, I honestly thought it was a joke. At the time, I kind of looked through my pantry to see if I had some canned goods. The typical preparations that you that you make. I do have a little generator, so I went to get fuel. The only service station I could find that was open in Athens only had diesel and it had premium. So I had to buy premium gasoline to put in my generator. <laughs> I thought it was going to be just one or two days. I did not realize the storm was going to last for a full week. It was Valentine's Day when the, you know, it started snowing. It was kind of joyous because we don't have snow very often in Texas. My dog loved it, rolled in it, shoved her nose in it, had a great time that first day, not being particularly worried. Everywhere was covered in snow. I mean, like everywhere. I mean, it was beautiful. It looked pretty. However, when we lost power, that was when, okay, he, my daughter began to panic. I just really was not prepared. And, and you know, on the news, they said that we were going to have rolling blackouts, meaning like, our electricity was going to be cut off for a certain amount of time and then it will pop back on. Well, that didn't happen. So nearly three million customers without power this morning. Rolling outages, power outages across the state. That leaves up to two million Texans without guaranteed warmth for what looks to be an incredibly frigid night ahead. Power went out for about 30 minutes to an hour. But then it came back on. We were able to finish dinner and everything was fine. And then it's off for like two or three more hours. It was probably about 15, 18 degrees outside. My mother-in-law is COPD. Once the temperature gets down to about 60, it starts getting a little rough. The house was dropping to about 40s. Um, it gets to the point where the mother-in-law is struggling so much to breathe that we, we can't do anything about it. Her oxygen machine's not working. We can't maintain oxygen levels. So we had to call the, uh, we had to call 911. There is a moment of panic that goes through your mind because you actually don't know how cold it's going to get. One of my neighbors across the way, they're in their late 60s, um, resorted to chopping up some of their furniture to burn as, as uh, heat, as a source for heat. At night, my son would run the car all night, and him and a few of the kids, they would swap out in the car to stay warm, and I stayed in my room underneath just as many blankets as I can. The biggest story for me was the helplessness around making sure my parents were okay, because, like, without heat, I was concerned with their both of their fragile health that that was going to, you know, that was a deadly situation for them. I was stuck in the dark with no electricity for 72 hours. And it was cold. Every time I breathed, I could see my breath. I was sad, I was angry, I was confused. I literally cried. 
by the time we even thought about going to the store, the shelves were already empty. People were waiting in these lines for hours and hours just to get like bread and milk. I have six children and I'm a disabled veteran. And so I lived check to check and I didn't have very much food in the house. I remember I told the kids that uh, we should probably go to the store the next day. The next morning, the ice had already covered over the, the roads. So when we tried to go anywhere, the car just started sliding. And so we didn't go nowhere. We, we just came back home. There was only a couple of days worth of food. We ate once, once a day and it was like a can of raviolis and everybody just kind of shared it. It looked like the end of the world had happened. Hang in there, folks. Only a couple more nights of this winter storm before it starts to feel like Texas again. And we are not out of the woods yet. We're going to have another hard freeze tonight, which could put your pipes at risk again. We left right before the next snowstorm hit because it was just getting too cold and we didn't want to be in the apartment without any power for days. When we came back, um, I think the end of the week, um, found out that my apartment had flooded. It was just shocking. You, we were splashing on our carpets and just seeing pictures that we had, that had gone on the ground ruined. It just hurt me more that my daughter had to shed tears and cry. It damaged her room the most, so a lot of her things had to be thrown away. There's people who lost things that, you know, you can't replace. My my parakeets froze. They died because it was too cold. Some of my fish died, and I lost a goat. The older horses just became lethargic and they couldn't get up. One of them, we actually had to put it down ourselves. It's hard to not feel guilty that you couldn't do anything. My uh, sick father, he contracted COVID. He chose to self-quarantine because he didn't want to obviously spread COVID to everybody. And for a heart patient, somebody whose blood doesn't get pumped through their system like the rest of us, it's really bad to even go 30 minutes without heat in the house. And he was also at the time using a CPAP machine and all of that goes away when, you know, when there's no electricity. He passed away on the 22nd. I regret not going over and checking on him. There is a bit of encouraging news this morning. The temperatures later today are expected to get back above freezing for the first time since this past weekend. This cold snap has really been, um, been something for the record books, that's for sure. When the power came back on, I think we all cheered. <laughs> we all was trying to argue over who's going to get in the tub first. Honestly, I think the first thing that was on everybody's mind was showers. <laughs> turn the heater on and turn it up. And then checking on my neighbors to make sure that they, they were their power had come back on too. It was really uh, heartwarming to see how everyone pitched in and helped each other out. It, we, we saw the best in each other during this time. And, you know, I like to think there's just something uniquely Texan about looking out for our neighbors. We would check on each other the na as neighbors, you know, because we live in a in a big building. The community, everybody in Odom was getting together and giving each other pipes so they can fix their, their pipes and neighbors and everybody else. We all did it together. I actually just got back from Florida. When we got our first cold snap, I just made up in my mind, I won't stay here again for that. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to live through that ever again. My wife says every time I talk about it, I sound like I'm scared, but I guess I am, you know, I just, I don't want to go to that anymore. 
We have water, we have food, we bought a generator. We bought a generator. We were uh, going to invest in a generator. And just considered that part of our life now. I don't think any Texan is happy with how ERCOT handled the situation. I don't think Texas is a bad state and I don't think it's mismanaged overall, but this is a specific thing that really needs some serious addressing. Since the grid hasn't really been repaired, I, I feel like this is going to happen again. I signed 12 new laws after that storm uh, to uh, make sure that our power grid is resilient and reliable and stable, uh, even during the harshest of winter storms. Can you give right, a guarantee that the lights are going to stay on? I can guarantee the lights will stay on.